All right, man, you're yelling, dude, dang. Oh, we're on? Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> you're, not, you're not used to, like, hey, we're, we're just on now. You know, it's it's not like, you know, it's not before where you get to roll into your biscuits and everything, your biscuits and gravy. You got to, you know, we should have done the five, four, three, two, one. We're live. 34 seconds. Oh, what up, Biscuits? This is Absolutely Boxing with Nick, or Nick and Joe. I'm the King Biscuit himself, softening up all that boxing great. Absolutely, Joe. And joining me somewhere right here is going to be the demented mind of Nikolai Luthar. He knows no bounds or tiredness, penetrating your brain with boxing knowledge. What up, Nick? Uh, it's a little weird tonight, huh? It is a little weird. I'm trying to get used to it. I mean, I know we're doing this thing, and you know, you're a genius. Hey, there we are. We're still we're still in the same place, so you still point up there. Okay. I got us all set up so that you know nothing changed. Nothing changed except everything changed. (laughs) Lagging. I think we're lagging pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Facebook does. We're always and see, I don't think people realize that we're always like 30 seconds behind. Like, it's the same thing. I think that's like part of the issue with why Facebook's having so many problems with lives on Android right now is like I would before when you would invite me on, I'd always be like five seconds behind you. Um, But now I'm like 30 seconds behind on my phone. And uh, it, it just feels like it can never catch back up to where you're at. So to remedy that, uh, you know, we went ahead and got um, some new software, try to figure all that out because uh, we miss all talking to all you people. Um, so we're going to try this out, see how it works. If we're having any issues, uh, please let us know in the comments. Um, if everything sounds good, you know, let us know that too. Shout out to Dan Hewitt checking in. Appreciate you. Into boxing. You the man. All right. Got my boxing elite shirt on tonight. Shout out to... Greg Carey and Kristen McGrew and all the people, all the admin over there, Boxing Elite supports absolutely boxing. So we support them. We appreciate them. I didn't get a Boxing Elite shirt. I want a Boxing Elite shirt. Got to talk to Kristen McGrew. I want to come over and steal yours. I mean, that wouldn't be very nice. We got to send back an absolutely boxing shirt. I mean, I need an absolutely boxing shirt. I mean, I'm wearing a Boxing Elite shirt. I need an absolutely boxing shirt. All right. All right, cool. What are we talking about tonight? Gilberto Ramirez, a.k.a. Zerto, versus Jesse Hart tonight live on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts, sir? Uh, so I've been we, – we went and saw Jesse Hart fight uh, Damon Nicholson uh, out, in, out at uh, Leah Core Center in Temple, uh, I think about mm, eight months ago or so. Um, and you have not stopped talking about this fight. I uh, won this rematch. The day I saw the rematch reappear, uh, you know, I texted you. Um, I got to know why you're so excited for this fight, because the way the first fight went down was not even particularly close. I mean, Jesse Hart looked bad in that fight. Um, I didn't think he looked particularly great against Nicholson the night we were there. Um, he caught, you know, he ended up catching Nicholson late and uh, Nicholson, like inexplicably just decided to quit in the middle of the fight. It was one of the more bizarre stoppages I'd, I'd seen. Um Tell me, what is it about Jesse Hart that you think that he's improved so much that tonight's the night that he, you know, takes that belt off off Zerto? Um, the fact of the matter is that um, sorry, sharing. The fact of the matter is that um, Jesse Hart looked, um, for back, lack of better words, and no disrespect, Jesse Hart, he looked terrible in their first fight against Gilberto Ramirez. Yeah. Um, Ramirez had his number. Um, Jesse Hart started very well in the fight, first two rounds. Um, and after that, it was kind of the, the Zerto show. And I think, you know, you learn from your losses. And um, what Hart did not do in the first fight against Ramirez, he worked on, and he, we showed the, we saw the improvement between, like, with him against Damon Nicholson and also uh, with him against uh, Gabronski. Uh, so I know that Dan Hewitt disagrees with us. He's with me. He says that Hart won't beat Ramirez. 
And I, I get it. You know, technically he's the odds on um, loser at this point. I understand. But the fact of the matter is um, he puts his combinations better, better together. So he was more of a one punch relying on his power for the longest time in his career. Uh, he's actually using combinations and he's actually work, learning. He learned uh, he uses working the body more. And that's things that he has to do against Zerto to stop the onslaught. That is that that Mexican come forward, beat you down and try to beat you in a submission. Because that's what happened in the first fight. So the fact of the matter is Hart has worked on those things in his past two fights. That's why this fight will be different than the first one. Okay, uh, you know, I think the the only point I can really make in your favor here is even in the first fight against Zerto, it seemed like he um, it seemed like he was starting to figure it out a little bit. But even when he figured it out, I mean, you know, it was billed as you know the boxer versus the puncher. Jesse Hart was supposed to be the guy with all the power, uh, and Zerto looked like he had better power than Jesse Hart did. So I struggle to find a way that you know it, you, we get um you know we get the English guys telling us all the time, don't you think Dillian White's better? Yeah, I think Jesse Hart's better, but I don't know that he's better than, than Zerto at this point. And I, I 100% get that. Shout out to uh, Carrick B. Taylor checking in. We appreciate you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's the thing. And I, I think that is what uh, Hart knows going into this fight, that his power is not something that he can rely on. It shouldn't be the first thing that he relies on going up against uh, Zerto. So that's why he's going to use more boxing ability. I believe that Hart probably tired himself out quicker in the first fight, trying to get away from Zerto's pressure so much as opposed to boxing to keep the pressure off him. He was literally, you know, using that Mayweather uh, around the perimeter of the ring style, quote unquote. And that wastes energy. You know, if you're going to sit there and circle the perimeter of the ring the whole time, you're going to waste a lot of energy. So what you have to do is that to stop someone from coming at you, you have to get a boxing game plan to get them to not come at you. Not run away and use pot shots, but get them to stop coming at you. Power is one way to do it, but as long as you can use boxing ability, i.e. combinations and body work, it's going to make Hart more successful. So even when you win a fight and you come back into the rematch, though, you got to prepare for the fact that your opponent's already seen what you got what you presented to them last fight. And you know, if you're going to stay one step ahead of your opponent, you know what they're going to do in the rematch based on what they saw in the first fight. Zerto's long and he's tall and he doesn't fight long and tall. Um, but we saw him uh, in his last fight. It was on ESPN Plus. I forget who it was. But we saw him try to fight a little taller uh, in that fight. And I almost wonder if he's going to come out with the game plan tonight to try to keep Jesse Hart on the outside. I know it goes against everything he's done his entire career. I know it goes against his entire culture. I understand all that. Uh, but if Jesse Hart's going to circle the wagons and try to, you know, try to keep him off him, um, I don't think if Zerto stays on the outside and just boxes him, I don't think Jesse Hart can do anything about that. So you're thinking that if Zerto decides to box, that it's going to not be well for Jesse Hart is what you're thinking. Yeah. Zerto don't know how to box. I mean, you know, he's come forward. His boxing ability is okay, but, you know, He's a come forward, um, you know, beat you up type of guy. And that's just, will this chameleon uh, change his color? <laughs> that wasn't even close, man. <laughs> but the, the, all I know for a fact, we're going to see a different Jesse Hart tonight. But I don't know if we're going to see a different Zerto tonight. That's all I'm saying. All right. So what do you think? You think Jesse Hart knocks him out? You think Jesse Hart by decision? Because you, you think Jesse Hart. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Philly's own Jesse Hart. Uh, I, I, and just for the sole fact that if you go by the first fight, no, Jesse Hart has no chance. But going by the first fight and his three fights since his loss, his activity, because I think Zerto fought twice yeah. um, since he fought Hart. And uh, he didn't look very good in his last, like you were saying, like he, he tried to be a taller fighter. And it just it was a very boring, uh, boring fight uh, when normally uh, he has more action. So, I, but I think if he brings that type of fighting to Jesse Hart, that you're going to stand right in front of him and try to box Jesse Hart, then you got to you got to deal with his power that he's going to land. So, that's why I got to ride with Jesse Hart because of his improvement. I mean, the man was uh, was 22 and 0 and uh, a WBO champion at the time, and then 
you know, he got his learning experience of losing to Gilberto Ramirez. So he worked on it and he did. I know it's the second time I'm saying it, but still, this is this is the classic case of a fighter actually improving for the rematch. So if Ramirez thinks he's going to see a shade of what he saw the first time, if he's if he's taking it lightly or whatever the case may be, it's idiotic because his heart is literally he's coming to box and he's coming to hurt. All right. I you know, judging by the way the scorecards were last, I thought this was really weird because those scorecards were close. I mean, I think it was like 115, 113 or something like that. I, the, the scorecards were closer than I ever could have imagined. Yeah, it's weird. Um, you know, Jesse Hart's probably not out of this yet. Uh, my big, my biggest concern for him, though, is I think I agree with you. I think he's got to work the body, but I think he's got to get out of there, too. And in the first fight, his footwork was clumsy. I mean, he might have almost gotten knocked down because he tripped over himself a couple times. Uh that that part of your game, I mean, he's got to improve that a lot tonight. Uh, I'm just noticing I misspelled Alberto. <laughs> <laughs> it like caught me mid sentence. I was like, oh man. <laughs> uh, but, but that footwork, if that footwork's improved, and I I just think footwork is one of the more difficult things to improve between two fights. Um, I think some guys are naturally skilled on you know with their feet, and, and you can improve it. You have to dedicate yourself to improving it, and even if you can improve it, it's only going to get so much better with time. Um, yeah, and and I don't know, but again, those scorecards were so close last time. Even you know, getting mauled, uh, maybe he does have a better shot than I'm giving him. Hey, that's what I'm banking on. Shout out to Sardell Sam uh checking in. Appreciate you so much. We appreciate uh, the Jewish bulldog, Benny Sinekin. Philly Zoom. So, shout out to you, Sernel. Um, yeah, and that's and that's the case that it has to be. Hey, uh, Sernel, uh, if you're still watching, can do you, how do we sound? Do we uh, trying some new software out? Trying some different things. So, if we sound weird or funny. The, let us know. So, um, and, and when is Benny fighting again? Uh, in, in 2019. Okay. <laughs> 2019 is only two weeks away, though. So, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I know, you know, between his pro debut and the um, and his second fight, you know, it was only a month and a, uh, six weeks, uh, yeah. five or six weeks. So um, see him in January on a hard hitting card. Why not? I mean, you know, he, that's what he does. And we will report that. Right. I'm hoping Benny's still here. So he'll, he'll post it up in the comments when his next fight <laughs> got scheduled. Yeah, so now is Benny's mom. If uh, she could let us know what... Um, and he's doing great. I could also as many or George Hansen Jr. He's the man. So, with that being said, what is your pick for tonight? I mean, I know that you know you're you're anti heart of this one, but what do you think? So, what got me thinking about it was, you know, I thought, well, it'll be I, I, I got Zerto, but I have it in a closer fight. But when I thought that in my head, I kind of ran through that and was like. Okay, so what, a split decision then? I mean, because that's the only way that, that those scorecards get closer. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, I could, I'm going to go with split decision for Zerto. Okay. And yeah, before them, them uh, like you said before, the um, they gave, they, they made the, those point cards so slow, uh, close together when literally Jesse Hart got, you know, he got worked over yeah. for, for those rounds. And he should have been a lot further, probably more like a six round. Six or five, at least a six or five round um, swing for for uh, Zerto, you would think, but uh, but at the time, uh, Park was the champion and Zerto was a challenger. So if you go look at it that way, then at this point, you know Hart would have to uh, have a better fight against Zerto in order to take the belt from him. So if it it depends Zerto on what it Zerto is. was the champ. Yeah, exactly. You said Hart was the champ. Hart was the champ the first time they fought. No, Zerto was. I thought Hart had the belt. No, no, Zerto. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I just rewatched this fight last night, man. I don't believe you. That's what's happening. <laughs> Gaslit. <laughs> oh, man, I, <laughs> I think Nick's. Yes. Benny's mom says, let's go, Jesse. You got this. That's all you got to know. 
I'm rooting for Jesse. Do not get me wrong. Do not sit here and say I'm not rooting for the Philly guy. I am rooting for the Philly guy. Okay? I just don't think the Philly guy is going to win. Well, see, the problem is when you make predictions, they come true. So I need you. I think I'm wrong on this one. You think you're wrong on this one? I think I'm wrong. That'd be great. The, the more I think about it, I, I don't know if, like, you're getting in my head or if Benny's mom's getting in my head or, or what's happening here. But, like, I don't know, man. That, that split decision thing in my head was just kind of like, mm. But you know what Paulie says, man. Nobody goes into Texas and gets a fair shake, all right? That's true. Ever since Whitaker yeah. fought Chavez, nobody gets a fair shake in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> that, right? means, that means Jesse got to knock him out. Tell you what, Zerto's tough to knock out, though. Zerto took some bombs from Jesse Hart last time. He was. So um, that's why that body work, you know, like Teddy Allen says, deposited money in the bank. Then for later, I mean, here comes Hart with them knocking, you know, like, you know, Punisher said, right? You know, <laughs> he hit the body, the head go with it, right? Mm hmm. Shout out to Punisher. He ain't here, but I just want to shout him out. Absolutely. Love Ron Allen. Missouri State champ. Missouri State champ. Three now. That's right. So we got, you know, I looked at this card. I saw two more standout fights that, you know, I, I was interested in. I, I'm not sure either one's going to be particularly close. Um, You want to take Joshua Greer and I'll take Michaela Mayer? Yeah, Joshua Greer is taking on Daniel Lozano. Daniel Lozano is 15 and 5. Um. Just seems like one of those things. And Joshua Greer is one of those those young champs um, that – not champ, but just a, a young pro fighter that, that has that it factor. And um, they're grooming him. They're bringing him up. And he's fighting at, at 118. That's Bantamweight, right? Or, yep. Okay, Bantamweight. So um, he, he has more – he has weight to gain. He could probably easily get up to feather. And, you know, he's coming, he's coming up. And this is just one of those fights that – Joshua Greer needs a dispense of Daniel Lozano and call it a day. I mean, if he doesn't, then Daniel Lozano is not actually, I mean, he has five losses. He's not that much of a slouch. It is a step up for Joshua Greer, but, you know, and if, and if, and if, oh, if uh, you know, don't blink Greer can do that, bring the don't blink action, then it, it's going to be telling. And if this is, again, like we talk about when we watch King Rye, King Rye's fighting tomorrow night, right? Um, I wish I course Stevenson. Secure Stevenson. Yeah. We talked about Devin Haney. Dunk. We talked about um, – <laughs> you like how I did that there? Uh, yeah, that one, huh? Um, uh, Teofima Lopez. And everybody, every, every one of these prospects that are coming up, you're supposed to show out a certain way against your certain opponent as you step up. That's what we need to see from Joshua Beard tonight. And if speaking we don't of, see – Speaking of Lopez. Ahead. Speaking of Lopez. 2008 is almost out the door, and Lopez puts his foot in it for knockout of the year last week. Dude. <laughs> oh, that, the, here's why I think it's knockout of the year. That is the most, because we text back and forth every single fight. Yeah. That is the most we text about a knockout all year long. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those ones where I reach for my phone, and you're already blowing me up with, Did you see that? Did you see that? I'm like, oh, man. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to Susan. She's like, oh my God, this guy's getting killed. And I was like, yeah, but he's taking these punches well. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, he landed that overhand right. And I was like, mm, not that one. <laughs> and I, I, make, I make the comment to you about how his arm, left arm bent in a way it's not supposed to because of the contraction of the muscle. And you're like, I was too busy watching the dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that fencing response was scary. That... Mid that knockout, that knockout was scary, man. Yeah. Uh, speaking of scary knockouts, Donna Stevens still 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 fighting, man. So you know, want to give a shout out, props. You know, best of luck, prayers to his family. Prayers to Donna's. My goodness, that's, yeah. that's so. That's so. Like when you say you don't expect something, I know it, it's this is a, this is a tough sport. You you get repeatedly beaten in the face, and these things are all possible. But yep. then you talk about. You talk about a Donna Stevenson. This man, like, literally, like, his nickname is Superman, and he really kind of was, like, defended a belt successfully for over five years. Yep. I think it was nine or ten successful defenses or more. And just as an older man, 41 years old, still laying whoopings and taking it out, and taking out the competition as they came, figuring out a way to win. And then to have this happen, it's just so... 
it's so unexpected. Even though you, you can feel that it, it would happen, you know it kind of expect could happen. But something like this was just like it's a punch in the gut that how yeah. how time is for these boxers. It's crazy, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this is you know, this obviously it's the worst case scenario, and you know, the more you're on the sport, the more you talk to these guys, the more you hate to see this kind of crap. Um, it's a dangerous sport, though. I mean, it is. You know, and all you can do is, uh, you know, pray every time these guys get in the ring that nobody gets hurt like that. Yeah. And the only consolation we have that, that is that the fight was completely legal. Uh, Gavall's dick was not yeah. cheap in any sort of way. It was just one of these things that happened and it, it was very unfortunate. Age caught up with them all at once, maybe. Who knows, you know? It's crazy. So, yeah, prayers to Donna Stevenson. We're, you know, hoping he pulls through and uh, we'll keep you updated as, as we find out. So, yeah. So, on to some happier news, maybe. Uh, my girl's fighting tonight. Now, I know everybody loves Clarissa Shields. Everybody loves Christina Hammer. My girl, Michaela Mayer, is fighting tonight. Michaela Mayer is my favorite female boxer in the world right now. I don't think any female boxer cracks the way she does. Nope. She throws so hard. She And she throws angry every time she goes out there. She should be starting. I don't know what in about an hour. Like when? When did the undercard start here on ESPN Plus? I think it's. I think it's six or seven. There's a bunch of fights on the card. Probably six or seven. I think it's six o'clock, half hour. If if you get a chance to watch her fight tonight, watch her because she's she's smooth, she's athletic, and she throws as hard as as any female boxer you'll find. She throws harder than half the male boxers you'll find. Uh, she throws angry, and she fought um, Serrano's sister. Right? She was the one that fought Serrano's sister. Couldn't. Could knock her out, um, but it's Cindy Serrano, right? Yes, not Amanda. Yep. Right. She fought Cindy Serrano, and Cindy Serrano is a tough, tough woman. Um, so she had a lot of trouble bringing her down. Um, but Cindy Serrano looked like she went through hell getting through that fight after it was over. Crazy. And, yeah, I, and I love, um, you know, like you're saying, dynamite, like literal dynamite in her hands. And, and I love the story of the fact that she was a model. You know, yeah. and everybody and everybody looks down on these things. Like they say, like, oh, what, what's a pretty young woman going to do in the sport of boxing? Well, Kayla Mayer is your answer to that, and that it's just it's fantastic. Like you said, she she's like she's a pit bull in that ring. She's yep. angry. She throws her bad attentions, and she has power along with those bad attentions. Man, ESPN is always making up a new story for her, though. Like she was she was a model for a while, then she was homeless and. I don't. I don't really understand her backstory. I don't know what she. I don't care, man. When she when she lands a punch, the entire stadium can hear it. You know, and you know when you've you know been at a boxing event live, you know that sound. Like if you're up in the nosebleeds and you hear it, you're like, oh, <laughs> that's no good. <laughs> we never. We didn't get to talk about. Uh, you know, we were having technical difficulties last week with uh, Facebook. Facebook's all jacked up right now. We didn't get to talk about the um, the twenty three hundred card that we went and saw from uh, King's promotion. Because no, we didn't. I'm thinking now about the uh, about the cracking sounds and um, what what was the name of the uh, the guy that fought first? It was um, uh, I can't remember his first name, but his nickname was Holy and his last name was Toledo. Uh, <laughs> um. Is that, is that who it was? The, he was yeah. the dude from New York, right? Yep. Yeah, he was from the Bronx, I think. Uh, he, you know, he was grappling with this one with with uh, with his opponent for about two minutes, you know, and they just kind of came out. They were swinging, swinging, swinging. They got into a grapple, and Toledo landed a body shot on him, and it was one of those body shots that you could just hear throughout the stadium, and everybody went "oh," and his opponent just kind of never came back from it. It was it was great. Yeah, you're right, Travis Toledo. Travis um, Toledo. From Bronx, New York, he fought Ronnie Lawrence from Philly. Yeah. I mean, th they were going at it hard, and it was fairly even until that body shot. And when he landed that body shot, you know, Lawrence kind of, like, hunched over, and he, you like, he hunched over in a way that he was, like, pointed, like, over in our direction, and you could just see it all over his eyes. He was like, that one got me. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's crazy. I mean... My favorite fight of the night was definitely the the um, the, the main event, but the heavyweights, man. Uh, Paul Coon versus Cade Rodriguez. They went hard for four rounds, man. Well, I'm not like, why is Cade Rodriguez a boxer and not an offensive lineman with the way he can move? Cade, for real, Cade Rodriguez. What is he listed at? What's his weight list now? You got the sheet right in front of you. 
293 pounds. 293. Okay. And the guy looked every bit of it. He looked country fed. All right. He's from Georgia. He <laughs> looked country. All right. And he would go through these spurts where he would just dash across the ring and, and start, you know, kind of getting on top of Kuhn. Now, now, Kuhn controlled most of the fight. I don't want to make it sound like Rodriguez, you know, had control over any of it, but just watching Rodriguez move across that ring, I was like, man, that dude is way too big to move that fast. <laughs> he was extremely athletic for his size, guarantee that. You know, he tired out quick, he tired out pretty quick, and that's it. Coon, you know, shout out to Coon, Paul, Philly's own Paul Coon. He um, you know, his conditioning was better yep. than the you know, big, big man's and the big man, you know, he tired out. He tried to he tried to turtle up and play defense, and he would throw in spurts. But when he did throw in spurts, he threw combinations in, but he would only throw like five punches in a row, and then he would turtle up again for a minute. So, yeah. but it was still, the, but the impact of both of those, especially Coon, Coon was just landing like the spit and the blood that was flying, and the impact it was just it was nuts. Yeah. It was nuts. Why don't you go, go ahead, man? Just give us the breakdown. Tell us tell us all about um. Tell us about Calvin Henderson versus um, uh, B. Rob Brandon, uh, Brandon Robinson. Oh, give us a little well, breakdown, man, because that was a, that was a heck of a fight. By the way, the twenty three hundred card we were at, we were at it. Uh, King's promotion. Uh, Marshall Kaufman, I think, was the one that put it on. Uh, yep. Mark Abrams um, was was like the, the event runner of that thing. Uh, both of yep. them did a fantastic job. The the card was amazing. The matchmaking was great. Uh, amazing. Every single fight was an action fight. Every single fight was lit, uh, and it culminated with a great main event. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, well, real quick, I like to before the main event because the main event was the best. I, I mean, build is the main event and worth every single penny of that main event. So, but our boy um, um, Sheldon Devon Teal from Philly Zone, but he's oh. taking on James um, James Brennan. Brennan was from. Um, uh, from Lancaster, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and um, we we interviewed uh, Devin Teal after the fight, and uh, you know he was like uh, he's a little upset about some he his words were uh, some promotional cooking that um that uh, Brennan was uh, signed the Kings and Devin Teal was not, and and that uh, Devin Teal it was ruled a draw because Devin Teal won the fight. So, but the fact of the matter is. Uh, Sheldon Devon Teal, this, these were 140s, so they were uh, super lights. And Devon Teal had great uh, head movement, and his jabs were, were on-point combinations, and his defense was really good. He made uh, Brennan didn't miss a lot. And Brennan did was more of a um, patient, throw-in-spots kind of fighter and move around. And so the action from Devon Teal kind of gave him the first three rounds. And then you were saying about the fourth round how – um, Devin Teal kept doing that dip to the left and kind of trying to land that power shot from that side, and, and Brennan was um, kind of onto it, so that's what gave him the fourth round. But that's the thing, like you know, it looks like that Brennan uh, that uh, Devin Teal won three rounds to one, but they ended up making it a a draw. Your thoughts? Um, I loved I loved Devin Teal. I thought uh, he was an exciting fighter to watch. Thought he was an exciting interview. And if he's out there, I'm sorry I'm going to say this, but I thought oh. I thought Devin Teal lost the first round. I thought Brendan Dean came out like a firecracker in that first round and took it. I can understand where you might say Devin Teal took that first round, um, but I did on my scorecard because I was scoring at ringside. I had um, I, I had uh, Brendan Dean winning the first round. Then I had De- Devin Teal winning the next two rounds. And then, yeah, like like I was saying, like uh, Devin Teal was kind of doing this thing where he was kind of dodging like that, um, and it looked like Brendan Dean started timing him. And then once Brendan Dean was timing him, he took that fourth round. So I wouldn't have been upset with a three to one Devon Teal card. I had it two two. The judge that had it three one for Brendan Dean, I kind of thought that was off. I, I don't know where you find three rounds to give Brendan Dean in that fight. Because yeah. I, he, there there was no argument in the second and third round. I you know, I thought Devon Teal won both of those clearly. So outside of that, I'm excited. Um next time Devon Teal fights, I'll be there because I want to watch him fight again. Um conditioning on that man's amazing. He's athletic, uh he's got good power. Um. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to go back and watch him fight again. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely. In on that. <laughs> he he is he is zero to one hundred real quick in the ring and outside the ring in the interview. Like he's so yeah. If anybody watching this, um, just go just scroll down the page here. Uh, we're checking. My, uh, yeah, this page. We shared it to this page. Uh, Devin when we interviewed uh, Devin, the fight. He was 
he was hilarious. He was awesome to interview. I'm going to go ahead and post the uh, the link to the uh, King's promotion. Because King's promotion still has the video up on their Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and post that on the, uh, you know what I mean. Perfect. On the page. Uh, next fight after that was our boy, Isaiah Wise, man. Yeah. <laughs> there, there ain't much to say about this, but. <laughs> so. Strange, man. It was strange. Go ahead, break it down. What what did you see? I mean, we both watched it numerous times. What happened? Um, refresh my memory. Who was he fighting again? He was fighting Rodriguez. Uh, his name was yes, Andy Gonzalez. Oh, Andy Gonzalez. Right, right, right. Uh, and Gonzalez looked really good in that first round. I thought Gonzalez up until about like a minute thirty left in that round to go. I thought Rodriguez or uh, Andy Gonzalez was cruising in that round. Um, and Isaiah turned it around, started getting on top of him a little bit. I didn't think it was enough to win the round at that point, but I, I could see like Isaiah fighting back. I could see him kind of taking control of the fight. Um, and then with about 45 seconds left in that first round, Isaiah catches him real, real good. And I, I still to, I, I've, I've rewatched the video three, four times. I'm not sure what Gonzalez was looking for. You made the point that he was looking for his corner for help. <laughs> like that. Like. He, he got hit so hard. He just looked over and he's like, help. <laughs> <laughs> and so Isaiah did the right thing, you know. I, you know, Isaiah turned around and cracked him right on the chin, you know. And uh, from that point on, Gonzalez really wasn't able to recover. Um, he did make it to the second round, but pretty much Isaiah got right on top of him in the second round uh, and finished the fight. I, I caught up with Isaiah after the fight, and I asked him, I was like, "Dude, what what happened in that first round?" He's like, "I don't know." It's like I right. did the right thing. <laughs> You're right. Hey, protect yourself at all times. But absolutely. It's- it's so hilarious how, how how you say that. Like he caught him with a good with, with a good right hand, and and Gonzalez just drops his hands and looks in his corner, like like he just the look on his face is like he just hit me hard. Like what am I supposed to? <laughs> like he never got hit like that before, and he's like looking to his dad for help. And Isaiah dropped him after that, and that was pretty much the beginning of the second round. After that was the end of the fight. So that was just uh, it was hilarious. It's funny and <laughs> crazy at the same time. Uh, Billy's own, uh, Romeo Cruz versus, uh, <laughs> your, fa- your favorite, uh, Hugo Rodriguez from Nuevo Leon, Mexico. Look, all I'm saying is, I, I know you, you, you got Hugo, you got hot sauce, um, you got Katie Rodriguez. All I, all I wanted to know, and, and Marshall Kaufman was doing live last night or two nights ago. I don't know what days or what anymore. Um, but Marshall Kaufman was on live and I had to ask him, I was like, where do you find these guys? And I, you know, I kind of got back the, you know, the, the standard, Oh, you know, we, we network, they call us, we call them that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the, to find this guy in like some small town in Mexico and you bring him all the way up to Philly against your guy. And, and I liked Hugo. I did. Um, I thought his power was a little lacking and when he was able to land combinations, they just didn't seem to have any effect. Mm-hmm. And I kind of thought that made the fight a little, you know, like like watching Kate Rodriguez, right? You, you were like, man, if, if Rodriguez lands on Kuhn, like Kuhn's in trouble. You know what I mean? Or same with Brandon Robinson. You know, you thought like, man, if Brandon Robinson lands against Hot Sauce, like Hot Sauce is going to have problems. Um, I never felt that way about this fight. Um, but I still, but the matchmaking was great. So. Where yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent correct, and, and uh, pun intended. Romeo Cruz basically just cruised to an easy victory, man. Come on, man! Everybody's waiting. <laughs> I mean, come on! You gonna break down Robinson and uh, and Henderson? Yes. Thank you. So. The UBF Super Middleweight Champion, Brandon B-Rob, the Silverback Gorilla, Robinson versus Calvin Hot Sauce Henderson. The main event for the UBF title, Intercontinental, um, it did not disappoint. Uh, it was only seven rounds. Uh, the outcome is that Calvin Hot Sauce Henderson, uh, rep- uh, fighting out of Arkansas, representing his hometown in Texas, Um he came out with the victory. He got a TKO victory in the seventh round. And he, he earned that fight. And um, he earned that win because that fight was literally um, 
uh, action packed from bell to bell, first round to the last to the last. And the fact of the matter is that um, basically how the fight started is the first uh, two minutes of the first round is that Calvin and uh, Brandon were pretty much feeling each other out. And then in the last minute of the first round, um, B Rob caught him. Um, you watch the replay on it. He caught him pretty good. Um, it wasn't so bad that it hurt Henderson so much, but he caught him good. And then B Rob literally lit him up for one minute. And then uh, whatever hot sauce, I, t- I had an interview with Hot Sauce after the fact, and he said pretty much the um, when they went into the weigh in, when Hot Sauce went, when the team went into the weigh in, they're like, they saw how big and strong. Brandon was so they they said their initial game plan coming in was to brawl like was to mix it up with Brandon but then when they saw how big he was they were like whoa let's steal him <laughs> no, out no 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 no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said whoa let's uh let, let, let's steal him out in the first round let's see what happens before we go you know getting all crazy here but then um Henderson took uh a lot of B-Rob's, a good shots from B-Rob that last minute of the first round. And that's when his team was like, look, did he hurt you? And, and Henderson's like, he got me a little bit, but it wasn't so bad. So they're like, all right, let's go to our original game plan. Let's go in and go get him. And that's what Henderson did. That's it, man. I thought you like, um, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the left and rights wrong. Cause I forget which is which, but I think it was the third round or the fourth round. Robinson ended up with a cut under his right eye. Uh, and then the next round, they opened up a cut under his left eye, and that left eye was swelling. I mean, you could see it by the second, just kind of puffing up on him. Um, it was a little bit of the beginning of the end. Uh, kind of figured, you know, losing visibility in a fight the way that those two were going at it. Um, a lot of punches being thrown. Uh, Robinson was kind of pawing at it a little bit. Um, if that... If he doesn't open up those two cuts, I don't know if we look at a different fight. Um, fact of the matter is that did happen, though. Um, the one thing I was really impressed with with Henderson, though, is Henderson landed on – whichever eye was swelling, I think it was the left. Uh, but Henderson landed on that eye over and over and over again. And I'll tell you what. When you open up a cut against somebody and you want to end that fight, you hit that target over and over again. Uh, Henderson had – you know, and we talked about how this was like – you know, Philly Pro versus an amateur fighter. You know, oh, uh, the amateur fighter throws punches and bunches, but he doesn't throw for knockouts, this, that, the other. Um, but that cut opened up and that amateur background took over and he was able to use that accuracy to just keep working it, working it, working it. And eventually, you know, just wore Robinson down. Yeah. Hard fought Absolutely. On both sides. So both the, sides, um, though. But, yeah, hard fought on both sides because, I mean, the look on Robinson's face after the fight was over, I mean – you fell for the guy because the guy put everything out there. You you knew he did. But at the same point in time, you have Henderson in the middle of the ring trying to celebrate, and he can't because he's so tired. His corner's holding him up trying to, like, you know, get his arms up while he's trying to celebrate because he can't even stand on his own at this point. I mean, both those guys left everything in the ring. It was amazing to watch. Uh, really cool. And, again, 2,300, you know, King's promotion. Killed it. Absolutely. And, and – um. Just to keep elaborating on that, in the second round, um, um, Brandon broke his orbital bone mm. in, in his left eye. I did not and, know that. Yeah, so second round. So Brandon uh, Robinson fought for five rounds with a broken orbital bone in his uh-huh. left eye. And um, B-Rob made a post <laughs> today. And you know, shout out to B-Rob. Uh, you know, he's awesome. Yep. Gorilla season. And we're in. Uh, he, he claimed that it was a headbutt that uh, broke the orbital bone and messed his eye up. Um, and that, you know, that happens in boxing. It is what it is. So, you know, he wants to run it back with Henderson. And I will be the first one to buy tickets to watch Henderson Robinson 2. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, they, if they fight again, I'm 100% in. Yeah. Yeah. So, shout out to them if they're, you know, if you're watching this. Lando Rosa, uh, Mark from Pivot, Pivot Boxing. Shout out to you guys and Brandon B. Rob Robinson. And of course, shout out to Calvin uh, Hot Salt Henderson, the new super middleweight w, uh, WBF Intercontinental Champion. I got nothing else, man. It's, you know, six o'clock. Badge <laughs> here. Ah! <laughs> I got it. 
<laughs> and uh, and we're getting ready to watch the ESPN Plus cards. Yeah, I, I mean, one more thing I have is that uh, besides the main events and a couple other fights, so out of like at least 11, 12 fights between tonight and tomorrow night, most of them are junk. You know, matchmaking is terrible at this point with top rank and um, – is it zone or like who's doing the matchmaking for this this fight tomorrow night? With it? is it Golden Boy? Is it all Golden Boy cards? Is it some mat, match room? Like anyway, the matchmaking is junk tomorrow too. So you know they need to figure this stuff out. Um, I wanted to save a lot of uh, what's going on tomorrow for tomorrow. So we jump back on tomorrow and talk about that because tomorrow's card's big enough that I think that you know kind of deserves its own show. We kind of messed around tonight with the Jesse Hart fight. We wanted to go over to the King's promotion because. I mean, frankly, we've been out of work for two weeks, so we miss you guys, and we just want to tell you what we've been up to while we've been gone. Uh, but um, tomorrow kind of gets its own thing. I don't know that you're 100% correct about tomorrow. Now, there's some. We got Tevin Farmer fighting tomorrow. Oh. Tevin Farmer's fighting, and Tevin Farmer's always fun to watch. Now, you know, uh, uh, Fonseca, Francisco Fonseca, you know, I'm not, I don't think that match is junk. I think that match is a little closer than you think it is. Okay. We'll see. Um, I think you're right about Canelo versus Rocky Fielding, but I think this is a feeling out, right? This is this. is We've talked about this before. This is uh, – Canelo is going up to a weight division he's never fought at before. Um, and before he takes on Liam Beefy Smith, before he takes on Alberto Ramirez, he needs he needs to see what middleweight – super middleweight power looks like, and he needs to see how his power stacks up at super middle. So, you know, I, I get what's going on there. Um, Joe, man, I'm all messed up with this card. I thought David Lemieux was on this card for some reason. Wasn't Shakira Stevenson and King Rye on this card as well? King Rye is on this card. And King Rye I'm excited to watch because King Rye changed coaches after his last fight. Look, I, I... We talk about the Backstreet Boy thing all the time. And again, I want to save most of this for tomorrow. We talk about the Backstreet Boy thing all the time. 19, 20 years old kid and says, hey, what I'm doing ain't working and it's not going to get me to the top and I need to find a way to do that. I'm rooting for him a little bit tomorrow. Okay. I want to see the best Ryan Garcia I can see tomorrow. Look, I recant about my saying tomorrow is junk, but tonight, tonight's junk. Tonight's junk. We're, we're here just to, to coordinate Josh Greer. We're here to watch Michaela Mayer and we're here to see Alberto Ramirez punk out Jesse Hart again. You're not pumping out Jesse Orr. You think you're back, <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, gotcha. You thought you were going to slip that past me. Oh, I knew. I, I knew what I was getting into. Sir. Catch y'all. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All right. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.